Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Let me take a step back again and talk about the initiative with Dallas Seminary. This came at a uh, an interesting time uh, with the development of the Leadership Center, where we have focused uh, on the community with our leader board program. Uh, we have focused on uh, Christians in ministry with our grads and others uh, with uh, conferences like we hold through the Center of Christian Leadership on campus. We also have a, a special arm of that that's directed toward our students. Uh, we're, we're now taking that and expanding that a little bit more, and it, it comes at a time in our culture, in the time in the seminary's history, where there's never been more of a need to uh, step into the public square but do it with both truth and grace. But, Daryl, it also comes at an interesting point in your career and in your life uh, as a, a scholar, as an expert in New Testament studies, uh, with specialties in uh, a variety of areas, and you've had an, an incredible background with exposure to media, uh, communication, uh, the public square. Tell, tell us why this initiative uh, grabbed your attention enough that you were willing to take the challenge and go for it. Well, uh, as you noted, I've had a lot of media experience, particularly in the last 10 years. I've done a whole round of interviews in a variety of venues of radio, television. Uh, I've, d- I've done a blog for six years. I d- contribute to a weekly blog at the Dallas Morning News that's gone on for over four years. Uh, my, my actual or initial major in college was in radio, TV, and film. Uh, and so um, I, I was going to be a sports broadcaster before God got a hold of me and changed and said, you're not going to go to baseball games. And, uh, and, and so in the process uh, of this exposure, which – also has brought me into conversations with a whole lot of media professionals about theology and religion. This is one of the things that fueled my interest, is that in having these conversations and in developing relationships with some people in the media, um, I have an appreciation for the honest questions that they're asking about the Christian sure. faith. And so, uh, and so I thought, you know, what better way than to, than to bring to the seminary that array of experiences and help students think about how they communicate um, to the public at large and what the possibilities are in relationship to the media and how to do that and how to do that well and effectively. Um, so I saw the challenge as not only meeting this 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 huge cry that was coming from, from alumni for something like this, but also in the context of my own experience to think about you know, uh, how to help people uh, think about, about doing this. And I've had it in enough different areas of, uh, in terms of topics uh, that I think I have, can draw uh, on the expertise of people I've gotten to know as a result of my own experience so that when we have these conversations, we not only can have them with our own faculty who are well qualified to address this, but also with some of the key people who are recognized as spokespeople in these various areas in evangelicalism. And so that combination, uh, I think, uh, allows me to to um, to, pr- to present the, some of the things that we're going to be doing, the podcasts and other things, in such a way that we can be sure that the people that people are going to hear from are some of the best, most articulate spokespeople for these topics that we could find. What are some of the expressions of this initiative? What'll, you mentioned the podcasts. Uh, what other uh, ideas do we have, and have we been talking about as a team? Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna try and do uh, weekly podcasts. They're gonna be video casts. Uh, initially, we won't stream them live because we've got a one of the things we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be learning as we go, and so we want to get the technical aspects worked out and that kind of thing. But our goal is to hit a topic and not just do one thing on it and then move on. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on a topic and we're going to do several presentations looking at it from several different angles and then we'll move on to something else. We might even loop back and come back to a topic that we've addressed once and come back again if there's a, a fresh issue on the table or a fresh angle on it. So part of our, our goal is to move through various topics in podcasts. So there's a podcast development. That will be very public. Uh, that will be on iTunes. Uh, that will be available through our website. That will be for everybody. Then we're all 
also going to do, we have special chapels, a handful of chapels each semester. Uh, it looks like it's going to run somewhere between three and five a semester, uh, focused on various topics and uh, that uh, overlap with what we're oftentimes what we're doing with the podcast. And that will involve usually a podcast, a special presentation to the student body that includes uh, sometimes my interviewing uh, the guest for a little bit of time, and then we open it up to the student body, often followed by a longer brown bag where the students get to ask questions. Questions for, that they have for over an hour period, and we'll we will record all of that and archive it. Part of what we're hoping to do is to actually build a a resource that wraps around the curriculum and supports uh, certain things that are happening in the classroom and offers support for certain things that we don't have time to deal with in the classroom. So some of this is going to be very well suited for alumni to keep them up to date with what's going on, etc. Uh, so you've got these chapels that are going to be done. I also hope to be meeting with local pastors on a regular basis. I think this is something that's going to come a little later just because of the logistics of getting launched. But the hope is is to meet with pastors in the area and just let them get together in a mutually supportive way, talk about the key issues in cultural engagement. They can give me feedback about what they would like to hear about, what they where they would want us to draw the expertise that we can get our hands on to help them, and, and also create a sense of fellowship and community among pastors here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That's something we can do here locally that's, that we can't do nationally, but we'll, we'll do that. So there's, there's that dimension of the equation uh, as well. So um, it, uh, we hope uh, that faculty members can send us a note saying they get asked a question in class that relates uh, to what they're doing or some aspect of cultural engagement, and they really don't feel like they can adequately deal with it in the context of the class time. They'll send me a note. I'll put together my team and uh, figuring out who's the best to deal with this, or maybe I'll give the faculty member a longer time to address it himself. And again, we'll record it and archive it, and then we'll make that available uh, generally. So there are a variety of, of, of ways in which we are going to – you're going to see cultural engagement. And then once a year – this is the biggie – once a year we're going to do a big public event uh, – in the Dallas area that draws on expertise coming literally nationally and try and have an, a major event for the public uh, that uh, tax, tax or connects in some way to some major issue in cultural engagement that people are facing. Uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing that in April this year uh, at Bentry Fellowship. And, uh, what's and what's the topic? To it. Well, it's, it's a combination of things. It's going to be which Bible, which Jesus, which Christianity. These are three areas in which, in which the church is being directly uh, confronted in, in a variety of public venues and in the context of uh, classes taught in the universities about Christianity, a lot of, a lot of different ways. So we're going to bring in an expert to talk about, you know, how can we know that the books of the Bible that we have in the New Testament are the are the books, if I can say it that way. That's a canon question. Uh, do we know that Christianity? The Christianity, what we often talk about as Orthodox Christianity, does that really go back to the first century or in the beginning where there's just a variety of Christianities and someone won? You know, the, the skeptical take is is that history is written by the winners. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we're going to deal with that question. And then you've got the variety of Jesuses that are out there in the public square and the various things that are said about Jesus, both at a historical Jesus level and just in terms of the public presentation of Jesus. So. We're, we split the day. We split the two days up into into three blocks, and we're going to deal with with which Jesus first, and then which Bible, and then which Christianity, and a, give people kind of a core. Uh, equipping uh, in each of those questions, and we've got a good array of speakers that are lined up for that event, and uh, that, like I said, we, we hope to get uh, – I'm hoping to get a 1,000 people to that event. Mark, you served as executive director of our communications before your present role uh, that we have uh, tasked you with and re recruited you for. Uh, talk about why – the engagement uh, both from the campus and beyond the campus, why you see this as an important uh, venture as it relates to uh, what we do here on campus. But, let me start with on campus. <clears throat> Obviously in my new dean's position, um, I'm all interested in curriculum and classes and syllabi and things like that. Uh, we want to have a, a, a good cohesion to what it is that we're doing. And I love the curriculum at Dallas Seminary. All of us sitting here at this table, we do, and uh, we hear from our grads, and it contributes to why we do what we do. 
I think we all have to realize, and we have done this for years, but it certainly has been heightened for us in, in latter days, that the seminary experience is not simply in the classroom. So in other words, a lot of times you'll hear us talk about the curricular and the co-curricular. This issue of the co-curricular is probably um, – it's more noticeable today. We have a lot of students that are coming from a variety of backgrounds that come out of a variety of experiences that uh, have been through things that we're seeing the product of our culture in many ways. And I say that probably in a negative light. Um, the student that comes to us today has an awful lot of baggage compared to years past. And I don't mean that as a as a bad thing for the student as much as we are seeing students that they're really wrestling with a variety of topics. And as they are wrestling with those and dealing with their culture in which they live today, it is not, you know, we joke about the fact of saying this is not your father's Oldsmobile, mm -hmm. and this is not the same culture in which students 20, 30 years ago came to us from. And we have to recognize that. And so when we're dealing with it's a real struggle in today's educational environment because all of the things that were important to us 20, 30 years ago, they're still important today. There is no doubt. We're not moving from our understanding of what the Bible is and wanting students to have an exposure to all 66 books. We believe in biblical languages. We understand all of those things. But now, on top of that, we need to address a variety of issues, and how do we do that? So now I'm bringing up those two pieces of the curricular and the co-curricular. And so we want to have a concerted effort, and that's where I'm really excited. And I say that I put my dean's hat on. A dean today in today's world is not just focused on the classroom. It's not just that. We are a total campus community, and education is more than just the classroom. And so that's why I'm really excited. And so I've got a fellow a partner in crime across the table here that <laughs> it, it's helping the, the curricular structure because it's the co-curricular structure. And so we're excited to see things that are uh, evolving here, even in what we're doing in, in chapel and things like that, dealing with these topics. And we're hearing from our students saying, can you please help us address this particular issue? Uh, we're hearing that from our grads, and we've already said that. So we're looking forward to soliciting feedback from our folks saying, what can you address because it's going to help people. And That's the, just on the campus community side. And the side. beauty of it is is that, you know, as we all know, having been in academic life for a long time, that getting curricular revision, you know, I, I, my joke is is that sometimes, you know, what's going to happen first, curricular revision or the Lord coming back, it, you know. <laughs> and, and so, sure. yeah, you know, it, that is always a very slow, deliberate process, and it ought to be because it's such a community process right. that you're dealing with. But this allows you some flexibility to build around the curriculum and give it support where you know it needs it, but it may not need a class. It may not be something that you put in hours in a typical academic way, and and so the nature of what this is allows you to be creative in, in working with it. You know it's necessary. You know your students need it, but where does it fit? Well, it isn't quite – it isn't the normal thing. It's not a course. It's not a program. That's it's right. Not a, Right, exactly. And, and yet there is a whole worldview and attitude thing that, that's important to students that you're trying to help help students grasp while they're here. And if you don't have this dimension, you know they've walked out less equipped than they ought to be. Sure. And so um, so that's that's another reason for doing it. I'm, I'm also excited on it off the campus, though, you know, for the last 10 years in the communication. And uh, Daryl and I have had opportunity to do a bunch of things together. And... Um, it's been a pleasure to work with the media. Mm -hmm. Most of my experiences have just been really, really good. While sometimes you'll certainly have those antagonistic moments, and they'll rear its, it will rear its head from time to time. But by and large, it's real people asking real questions. And if you take the time to slow down and listen to what they're asking, you have an opportunity to speak about the things of the Lord. And... I'm excited to see that take place. I mean, we have our grads, we've all talked about that, you know, 14,000 graduates that are asking us questions saying, hey, can you help me walk through this issue? Uh, Dallas Seminary is a, is a large family. We frequently reference it, and Dr. Bailey, I've stolen this from you, it's, it's not just a bunch of individual people, it's Dallas Seminary is a movement. And we have people all over the world, in all facets of ministry, in all cultures, engaging. And so... For them to come back and say, can you help us think biblically, theologically, to 
say, how would Dallas Seminary, with our doctrinal perspective, handle this particular topic? That's an honor for us to be able to do that. And so I'm excited to be able to put new resources into the hands of our grads that are doing amazing things and to be able to assist them. So I'll, I look at it here on the campus and abroad, and I think that attaches to our mission statement. You know, That's who we are. Another beauty of it is is that because of the nature of the medium that we'll be using, we have time sometimes to develop uh, some of the some of the arguments that you don't get time to do in class because you you know you got a syllabus you got to keep up with and and the value of that will be not only will our grads benefit but anyone who listens to what we're doing will benefit I, we, we we you know we're we're an educational institution and one of the ways that we can can reflect who we are is by is by educating and by educating in the in the most healthy sense of that term to show how to have those hard conversations right. where 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 difficult issues come up and to show uh, what the conversation is and in some cases interact with other fellow Christians who may not be exactly where we are theologically but on a lot of things are and so in that way show how you work through uh, different areas biblically and that kind of thing and all of that all of that um, goes to to help form the way a student looks at their ministry, and and some of that you can't do in the classroom. You really can't. And so this allows us, as, as I say, to to wrap around the curriculum and and, and um, put some some pressure points where before we haven't been able to apply any any pressure in, in formation, in spiritual formation that helps to round out the student and their experience and their preparation for ministry. Join us next week for part three of the Table Podcast. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth, love well.